Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless Hi, and thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start by saying thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you'll learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare. Anyway, the idea for this video is after I've made the announcement on the community post to all of you. If you have any questions for Father Joseph Iannuzzi, who is an exorcist and a mystical theologian of the church, and looking at the questions, I've noticed several of them have been addressed by videos I've shared in the past where Monsignor Stephen Rossetti talked about them, and also by other exorcists such as Father Vincent Lampert or Father Carlos Martins. And so for this video, let me put together in one video what Monsignor Rossetti shared previously. Of course, you can check out the full video of any audio clips shared here through the links I've provided down in the description box below. Firstly, let's address the question regarding tarot cards. Now, Monsignor Rossetti did bring up something about the demon who apparently is the demon that answers people's tarot cards. It's a form of uh, divination. It was a very serious sin. Here's, people don't realize that. I, was, I did a media show not long ago, and I was explaining to them that, that this sort of divination is very bad. And, they, and then they admitted that at the end of every one of their shows, they whip out a tarot card and read it. This is interesting. Um, a well-known exorcist uh, who was, uh, gave a talk the other day, which I heard, a wonderful uh, holy guy. And he said that he was exercising this one person and he, and, uh, and he was commanding the demons to tell me their name. Tell me your name. In Jesus' name, I command it because you can get rid of them faster with it if you know their name. And so he said, I don't have a name, he said, but I'm the demon that answers people's tarot cards. Yeah, where do you think uh, divination gets its uh, 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 force and power from? Whether it's Charlie, Charlie, Ouija boards, divination, and tarot cards, it's Satan, and it's a it's a huge uh, sin against the first commandment. It's a huge violation of, of uh, that uh, that God is all holy, uh, and so and they're hard demons to get rid of. By the way, that we there uh, in an exorcism, the spirits of divination are some of the last ones to leave because they're. Uh, it's, we don't realize uh, how, what a serious offense it is to, to do these sort of magic rituals. Divination, we try to not using God. We try to uh, uh, marshal these spiritual knowledge, powers, forces. Doesn't come from the Lord. Where does it come from? You know, it comes from the evil one. Secondly, we all see this happening right now. It's an open secret, really, regarding the footprints of the devil on America these days. Just take a look at what the mainstream medias are saying about Sound of Freedom, and then compare it to what they're saying about Netflix cuties. It is sickening, and whether you believe in this or not, doesn't really matter. Demons exist whether you believe it or not. Father, you don't have to worry about me. I'm an agnostic, remember? No, demons exist whether you believe in them or not. And your involvement in this trial might just open you up to their attacks. You know, I'm doing this ministry, you, you know, you get a sense of, of Satan's footprints. When Satan's particularly effective or powerful in a place, what do you see? <clears throat> discord. That's the first sign. Discord. Violence. Uh, hatred. Uh, judgmentalism. Uh, and what do we see in this country? The division is unbelievable. It wasn't like that when I was a kid. The terrorism. People didn't go into schools and shoot kids and innocent people. What? It's going on all the time. What? 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 That's clearly Satan's footprints. The way we speak to each other now, uh, clearly uh, violence and discord, the anger. My gosh, I drive down the street, the anger on the streets is just palpable. You know, so yeah. This country needs, and I say, by the way, I say uh, uh, the Leo the Thirteenth exorcism prayers every day for this country, and uh, I think we need it. I, uh, I, again, I love America, but there are clear footprints of Satan these days, and we need to, to, to marshal our spiritual forces and, and pray. Going to the third point, it's something we often overlooked, and that is how smart our enemies are, aided by our culture of making the devil as nothing more than a cartoonish figure with horns and red skins and in some depiction of the devil as someone friendly that deserves our sympathy. When possessed people try to call their spiritual director or priests, oftentimes they'll have a hard time getting through. The demons are just blocking it. And uh, people don't believe it, but it's, it's true and you can see it. And, 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 and they will mess with technology uh, for sure. Before the days of cell phones, they would mess with uh, you know, televisions and mess with lights, the doors would slam and the windows would, and things would fly off the wall. It still happens, of course. But, uh, but then cell phones. So now, I mean, just I, this morning, uh, one of our team members 
forwarded a text that he got from a pack of demons. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the phone was on the person's desk, the possessed person's desk. No one was near the phone. Someone walked into the room, looked at the phone. The phone was typing out a message by itself and sending this snarky uh, demonic text to, to this uh, team member. So, uh, yeah, no, we get them. And this is all I can say is this is our experience. And I'm not the only one. Several other teams have said the same thing. They're getting snarky texts uh, from demons. I know people don't believe it. And fine, I mean, I, I, you don't need to. But uh, you get a few, you, yeah. Many times Monsignor Rossetti has been threatened by these demons. And I'm pretty sure other exorcists are experiencing the same thing too. Remember what Father Vincent Lampert said during one lecture before, the devil knows who's working against him and he will do all he can to make their lives miserable. The thing about it is when you do encounter demons like an exorcism, for example, they're, they're really evil. No human being can, uh, you, look, you see that look on their face, the rage, and they just to kill you if they could. And I said, at one point in exorcism, I said, this, this nun was in the room next to me. She just knew. And I said, I want you to know what you're dealing with here. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to tell me, if you could stick a knife in the back of every person in this room and twist it and laugh, would you do so? He goes, yes. The evil is just incredible. They're always threatening to kill me. We're going to get you, Rossetti. We're going to kill you. Or I'm going to kill this person, whatever. I said, no, they can't maim you. They can't kill you. Uh, they're, they're allowed to do only so much. Uh, and and uh, ironically, as they tempt and torment people, it can be a source of grace, actually. It was for the great saints. When Padre Pio got beat, for example, John Vianney is a good good. Uh, St. John Vianney, the curie of ours, when he used to get beat up on one night, he said, when the Grippen, he called the devil the Grippen, when the Grippen was beating me up, I knew that the next day some big sinners would come for a confession and that some, some great graces would be. So he knew suffering would be a source of grace and conversion for many of uh, uh, people who came to him. Uh, so even, even Lucifer's tormenting uh, can, by the cross of Christ, be turned into a grace. There's something that Monsignor Rossetti said previously, which is pretty interesting. Well, it, there's a difference between standing up for what we believe the truth to be versus condemning people. Uh, and that's very important for us in our ministry and for people to, for example, as we talked about, I can't get angry at the demons. And I, I actually have lost it. I, I, after a few years, I really am not angry at demons anymore. I don't, they don't make me, I, I don't like what they do. And I get upset when they really hurt people. And I, I'm, I, and that, I find that painful and upsetting, but I, I, I don't hate demons anymore. You know, I don't, uh, you know, and, and, and matter of fact, at one point in exorcism, I, I said to the demons, I was, I was, you know, trying to get rid of them. And I said, in Jesus' name, want you, you know, I want you to tell me, does, does Satan love you? And he, he says, no. That's right. I said, you're serving someone who's a complete narcissist. Satan is the ultimate narcissist. I said, but, but does Jesus still love you? He goes, yes. Be why? Because uh, God is love. That's all God is. It's just completely love. I, I, I want you to think of heaven as a place of just complete love. And that's why you need to be holy to get to heaven, because if there's no love in you, there's no place in heaven for you. There's nothing in heaven but love, because God is love. And so it just, if you, if you try to get into heaven, get in that door, you know, with all that judgmentalism and the negativism and the anger after all that, I said, you can't fit. You, you go, probably have to, go, what, what we call purgatory, you're going to have to be scrubbed up a little bit before you get ready because you can't stand being in that loving presence with all that negativism. One thing you might want to do is a little practice for you. Every time you look at someone, if they're from the other party or whatever, I want you to remember, I want you to think of the person you love the most in the world. And then imagine that's that person. Or if you're driving a car and someone cuts you off, I want you to respond as if that person who just cut you off is the person you love the most. So treat everyone that you meet as the person you love the most in the world. Well, now it's the time for the halftime message. And for this video, I'd like to share you something powerful that Father Joshua Waltz said. And, and honestly, you guys, when you fall in love with the Lord, when you fall in love with God, the, the devil's making fun of you, loser. You get what? Well, you're just going to sit there. You're not going to do anything. And that's where a real man stands up to the enemy and says, no, you loser. I love him more than you. 
I love him more than you. That's a man. I used to tell my students all the time, I was like, you want to be a badass? You want to be a real man? Huh? You think you're so tough? You go around, you fight people, you drink, you take advantage of women. You think that's being a man? You think that's really hard. Is that hard to live that way? I said, that's easy to live that way. You want to be a real man? You want to be tough? Start respecting women. Start being the guy that can go out, maybe have a beer or two, have fun with his buddies, but he doesn't need to get tanked. Be the guy that when a fight's starting, that you try to break it up, actually. You try to bring peace, order. That's hard. If you listen enough what these exorcists are saying, I think personally for me, it explains a lot about the things that are going wrong in this world at the moment. Of course, not going so far as to say it, everything is the devil's fault. We humans have free will too, and we can choose to do something that is according to God's will or to commit evil. For example, putting tattoos of the devil on our body. A, a, a bunch of them would say, we, we, we join this satanic cult, a whole bunch of them. We're, we're, we're Satanists, they, they, they admit they're Satanists. And, then, and I got a couple of them, that, puts tattoos of demons on their shoulders, like a Kamana or, or Baphomet or, or a Baal or something like that. And that's horrible. Basically, what you're saying is you're branding yourself to the demons. Uh, you're basically saying, I belong to these demons. Uh, so when we get something like that in uh, an exorcism, we'll put exercise oil on the tattoos uh, we'll decommission the tattoos and you get a reaction. You know, you get a strong reaction, you know, uh, when you do that. So uh, I am frightened by the people today who just really don't know and are messing with evil things. And the other example is the wrongful death through abortions. There is a way in which abortion is an un a wrongful death and it opens uh, the, the door to Satan. Wrongful deaths. There was a house. Uh, uh, a few miles from here that was totally infested by demons. And what happened in the house was sex trafficking, drugs, and a shootout, and a lot of people died. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so they called in an exorcist because the, the house was infested and all sorts of wild things going on in the house after they all left. Well, that's because these wrongful deaths and these evil and sins opens the doors to uh, Satan. Monsignor Rossetti even recounted during one exorcism when he got angry. The demons stopped responding to the prayers. One of you asked before if a priest is not in a state of grace, will these exorcists still be able to perform the exorcisms? I had this new uh, exorcism book. I knew it was just translated in English. And so I was so pleased. I finally got a copy of the book of the, with a new translation of the right in English. I was pleased. I had one copy. They were hard to get. So I'm sitting there reading it, and, and the possessed person reaches out, grabs the book, and rips, <laughs> rips it. I go, oh, I was so mad. I just, I was so mad. And, uh, and of course, the, the exorcism stops at that point. I mean, she, 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 stopped, she stopped reacting to the prayers because I was angry, you know, and the demons were feeding off uh, the anger. So... I, as you said, I, went, I, 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 I said, what's going on here? This is not even, ah. So I went in the back, went to confession, came back, started praying again, and they started yelling and screaming and reacting. So, And finally, let me share with you the three recipe to being possessed by Monsignor Rossetti. Of course, he's not asking us to do it, but it's something that people are doing these days. I'll give you my recipe for getting possessed. I don't suggest you take it. One, stop practicing the faith. The faith is your shield, as Ephesians 6 says. You know, God is our shield and protects us from the wiles of the evil one. And then start, so let go of your shield. Then start committing serious sins. You know, we all know what those are. There's no, no secret there. And then number three, start doing some occult stuff. That's like giving a ticket to Satan. You know, start doing seances. Start doing Ouija boards. Start to doing Charlie Charlie. You know, start practicing magic. Um, all those things are not from the Lord, uh, and they're expressly prohibited in the Bible, and we, and we see the results of it. You know, I, we're picking up the pieces of people who said, oh, I grew up in my family. We practiced uh, Santeria. We practiced divination. We practiced tarot cards. This was normal in my family. Of course, now, you know, 20 years later, people have all sorts of problems. Of course you do. You, uh, any sort of magic, whether you think it's good magic or bad magic, it's not from the Lord. And so where does it come from? Where does the power come from that, that, uh, that witches use? And then some of them do use uh, uh, real spiritual power.
comes from Satan, whether you know it or not, and whether you intend it or not. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and hopefully you've learned a lot from this. For any of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. As we are doing this full time, it truly is a humbling journey of discovery and learning with all of you. Until the next video, again thank you so much to all of you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.